Hey folks, we present to you another sneak peek at the latest episode in our Filmmaker series, available only for Patreon subscribers. Today we have the talented cult film director Fred Olin Ray, who's directed such films as The Alien Dead, Cyberzone, The Tomb, Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers, and so much more, and he's still directing today. If you like this clip and want more, please visit patreon.com slash thenisnowpodcast, and for three bucks a month, that's right, three dollars, the price of a cup of coffee, you can help support the show and get great stuff that's exclusive to Patreon. And don't forget, every month you'll be entered into a raffle to win a copy of Sean Kanan's awesome book, Way of the Cobra. It'll change your life. So, Fred, what advice can you give to an aspiring filmmaker? I'm sure that's a, a very broad question that you've been asked a thousand times. But um, what well, is so fun? Because you know, it's really it, the the mystery, or a lot of the mystery, has been has been taken out of it. Because people now, you know, because when I was a kid, you know, if you wanted an image, you had to light it. You know, you you could turn yeah. the lamp on in the room and get a picture. And if you wanted sound, you had to have a separate sound deck with a guy to run it. You had to sync the sound later. Now they got cameras that record the sound right with the picture and the chips are so high speed. You can turn literally turn the lights on in the room and start filming. I don't think it gives you a professional product, but the mystery of, of, of getting a picture with an, an image with a soundtrack is kind of gone. And now people can burn their own DVDs and Blu-rays and they can print you know, a cover at Kinko's and, you know, away, away you go. I mean, I think the, a lot of uh, what used to be stumbling blocks for us youngsters uh, have been sort of removed. The one hmm. stumbling block that has not been removed and probably never will be is talent. Um, right. You either got it or you don't got it. I mean, yeah, you can record an image and you can record sound and you can burn your own DVD and put it in a beautiful case. But it still comes down to what's what's on the disc, you know what I mean? Right. And, exactly. And there's no, there's, you know, it's not for everyone. And because I, 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 as you know, I've gone through my whole life, and I, that even in the '70s, people would, or the '80s, people would say, "Oh, I'd like to take out the lunch and pick your brains." And I, at first, I was, I was, I was flattered, and I would do it. And then I realized all people wanted to do is they wanted me to tell them everything they needed to know to be a success for the cost of. A uh, salad, literally. <laughs> and so I just I stopped doing that. I said, "There's nothing I can tell you in an hour that's going to change your life." I said, "There really just isn't." And I said, "It's not for everybody. Not everybody's cut out to be a director." It's a, right. I mean, there's a. I mean, because if there were, there'd be a lot more people. I mean, there's a handful of us that you know got a break because of the home video boom in the late '80s. Dave Dakota, Jim Wynorski, me, and a few other guys, uh, and everyone else who didn't belong got washed out. You know, as the market crashed, only those the strong survived. And, you know, it's like I said, it's not not everybody who wants to be an actor can act and not everybody wants to be a director. And there's more to it than that. I always think that to be a success, you need to balance the business and the art together right. successfully, which is what always made me admire Roger Corman. Roger was the perfect hybrid of a businessman and an artist. He never, exactly. let, he never let either one of them get the better of him. You know, he walks that thin line and he does it so well. And that's why I patterned most of what I did in, in my early career off of whatever Roger was doing. Because there were tons yeah. of guys making six-day movies. There are not tons of guys who are multi-billionaires today. You know, if being yeah. able to make a movie in six days wasn't going to make you rich like Roger Corman. Roger Corman's business acumen uh, uh, combined with his sense of artistry, you know, made Roger a success. And that's how I pattern myself. You have to think of it. It's a, it's a, it's a business, but it starts with making a, a good product. That's the problem. Now I say to people is that the craftsmanship is lost because, yeah. because you don't have to, I mean, if you made a movie in the early seventies, you had to know how to load a 35 millimeter camera. You had to process right. it at the lab. You had to sync the soundtrack up. You had to cut it on a moviola. You had to mix it one reel at a time. You know, uh, there was a lot of craftsmanship that had to go. Even the worst films, even the Plan Nines, Rounder's Face, and the Invasion of the Blood Farmers, required a certain level of professional craftsmanship. That holding a handy cam and pointing it at some girl in a bathtub in your house with the overhead lights turned on—that's not. It's just not the same.